Hello and welcome to the Wes Craven Snooker Arena. You'll notice the snooker board, currently professionally covered with a black sheet, has all self-playing snooker tournaments. Will all the professional ones have that? Just to keep the the snooker board surface as good as possible. Don't worry, this is Rich Change Let's Square Theatre Podcast. You will not have any snooker on this. Um, today's guest is Brett Goldstein, but before that, I just want to thank everyone who's contributed to the Kickstarter campaign. It's still going for a few more days. Uh, it's gofasterstripe.com slash kickstarter if you want to join in. I think we are going to hit our target, and we may have even hit it by the time you see this. So thank you so much. I'm really moved and touched that you care enough about this show to to keep it going. Um, and I, I love the fact that uh, people are contributing small amounts. Uh, that That's the perfect way for this to go. And to have raised £50,000 is unbelievable. We could do with a little bit more because um, we've been hit by a, a filming charge that we weren't expecting. So we do need another couple of thousand pounds. So do keep giving. And if we get beyond £50,000, £52,000, we will just put the rest of the money into the next series which will be in June and July, and there's more in the autumn. So the more we can accrue now, the, the less we'll have to collect later on. There are various ways to contribute. If you don't like the Kickstarter campaign, go to gofasterstripe.com slash badges. If you pay monthly, uh, that money, will we're, we're saving that up for a new series of As It Occurs To Me, which will cost a lot of money, so we're, that's, that's building up. We're not saying we might not dip into it for other things if necessary, but that's ostensibly what that, that money is for. If you do that, you get lots of extras like a secret channel uh, of behind the scenes interviews and other, other videos and audios that we can't get anywhere else. You get a, an email, you get entered into a monthly competition to win fabulous prizes. And you get the guests uh, for Rahulastapa Rahulastapa revealed to you earlier than everyone else. Um, and probably some other stuff as well. It's a nice thing. If you just want to make a donation without any rewards at all, you can do just uh, buy a badge for a one-off donation or just make a one-off donation and not get a badge. All of that money, we will probably put that towards um, other internet projects and maybe the, the video podcast as well, just so that will again save us some time and money in uh, in Kickstarter terms if we do another Kickstarter campaign. Uh, and you can also try spill sponsor episodes, get in touch with Chris Evans, uh, chris at gofasterstripe.com, and uh, he can discuss terms with that if you want to sponsor an episode. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so uh, and if you just want to give me some money, because none of this money comes to me, then buy a DVD at gofasterstripe.com or buy a ticket to my tour or to Rich Jones' the Square Theatre podcast. But we want to keep this free so that the people who can't afford to pay or just refuse to pay because they're pricks, um, they can still see it for free because it's not about, we're not, none, all of the money we're making is just going into making the show. Uh, nobody's making any money out of doing this show. I, I'm hoping that, well, for me, the, the podcast itself is an end in itself. I'm obviously hoping that it will encourage people to come see me live. That's how... Uh, it works for me, but uh, also it's just good fun, and I like doing it. So I just want to carry on being able to do it, and I, if you enjoy it, then you can pay for it. If you don't enjoy it, you don't have to pay for it, and then it'll stop. But the audio will continue for free in any case. So, you know, those are the choices. Anyway, thank you so much. I'm genuinely, genuinely touched that we've got so far. I didn't think we would make this one, to be honest. So I'm amazed and, and really... Uh, really happy and I will do my best to keep the standards as high and low as you have come to expect them and make the show better and of course worse and annoy people who don't like me and ask emergency questions because some people don't like them and some people do like them uh, and you know I just do what I want I'm going to carry on doing what I want and if you like it carry on watching if you don't like it stop watching and it's a sort of self-regulating thing in that way in that if it becomes rubbish it stops so uh, thanks so much uh, yeah and uh, there's a chance to see me at the Leicester Square Theatre uh, on Friday and Saturday on Friday I'm doing Lord of the Dance City and on Saturday I'm doing Happy Now which is very nearly sold out it might be sold out by the time you see this uh, go straight away to leicestersquaretheatre.com to book tickets if you want to see that there should be tickets for Lord of the Dance City I imagine okay bye bye thank you for watching <laughs>
not just like I predicted. It's like I'm Nostradamus. Uh, welcome to the uh, show. It's called Richard Herring's Leicester Square Theatre Podcast. But I was down in uh, the West Bank of the Seine. <laughs> That's the thing. And a lot of the kids there, the French kids in berets and onions, were calling it Rahel de So, uh, so that's, come, that's becoming a thing, apparently. Uh, so, um, I, uh, I completely forgot last week uh, to read out the stuff I was meant to do. Very kindly, we've been doing a Kickstarter, and, uh, and on my birthday, uh, my 48th birthday, I spent an hour drawing around my own hand for you people. But you've been very nice to me, so I, I, I'm not, I don't resent you at all. Uh, and drawing t-shirts. And there'll be another Kickstarter uh, coming uh, for the next series, if people are interested in that, with ridiculous prizes. Uh, to, you know, rewards, I think they're called. But I should have said this in uh, the Bridget Christie episode. I don't understand it. It's from Jay Murphy. Are you in, Jay Murphy? Uh, Andrew McAlden read, read some gissing now, or read some gissing now. I don't understand what it means, and nor does anyone else. It's just created a, an awkward tension. Uh, so, and this is... This is a beautiful one for this that should be in this week's that I have remembered. Lee Blackshaw has sent this in. Uh, are you in Lee? No. I, I, you know, it's, it's possible. I took my then girlfriend to see Someone Like Joggart, which will be at the Leicester Square Theatre sometime in August. It's probably time has passed. To test her humour. Ten years later, we're still together and I have a one-year-old baby. So remind Joe Cooper that she's both lovely but also a fucking idiot. Uh, so that is... That's, more, that's better than a cryptic message. You know that gissing? It's probably, it's pro that, that might be a code word for a terrorist, that whole gissing thing. <laughs> Me forgetting to say it was probably the best thing I've ever done. And now that's going to come out, nuclear bomb on old, uh, won't it, nuclear bomb on London, that's what's going to, will that ever happen? Never. It will never happen. Why will it never happen? London's too big. London's too big to nuclear bomb. Yeah. You don't know much about nuclear physics, mate. <laughs> you know Hiroshima? <laughs> Bang. <laughs> they could blow up a bit of London though, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, okay, so. <laughs> And that's really my main concern. It's not like that they'll get the whole thing. <laughs> Just if they drop a nuclear bomb on a bit of it, that would be uh, a shame. The very cool uh, gentleman in the front row, very one of the cool kids, the kind of little wispy beard. Oh, what's your name, sir? Lee. Lee. Yeah, I used, used to know a guy. Uh, <laughs> do you want to do a double act? Uh, and uh, what do you do? What do you do for a living apart from being cool and gorgeous? I, uh, work for a charity. You work for a charity. Wow, he's so cool. Are you with this guy? You with Lee? Yeah. What's your name? Lauren. Lauren. Yeah. Uh, Cool. Um, and are you with him because of his charitability or because he's yeah. very hot? Yeah. It's just he's hot, I mean. He's really hot. I would go out. He's, you're in danger. I don't usually say this. You've done really well. Uh, I usually, you've done really well. I mean, I'll let the people at home judge. Uh, so, uh, because he's so gorgeous, you're also gorgeous as well. What do you do, Lauren? Uh, I work in customer service. You work at customer service. You're evil. And he's like a chap. <laughs> what, what charity is it? Is it an evil charity? Disabled children, that's you can't, that is the best one. <laughs> I can't even take the piss, there's nothing I can do to take the piss out of you for that. Except I do a lot of work. I've, I've raised um, £300,000 for Scope. I'm not showing off, but um, I'm not expecting a massive round of applause for that because you know, I do it out of the good, no, I do it out of the goodness of my heart. And I, no, I don't want a massive round of applause. What I want is a little blue parking badge for my car. <laughs> Fucking once, £300,000. They can just give it to one per... I can, I'll limp out of the car every time I get out. <laughs> Apparently that makes me sick. Do you, have you ever been tempted just to take one of the disabled parking badges and sick in you? No. You've never even thought of that, have you? That's the difference between you and me. That's why you're young. <laughs> you wouldn't say that, would you? You're not, you're not even filming, you know. No, that's right. It was a test and you've passed it. You're allowed to keep your job at the Disabled <laughs> Children Charity. Well done. Oh, people have turned against me. <laughs> it, it, it had to happen. Uh, so, um, yeah, sorry to... Um, uh, oh, I can't even... Let, I'll, I'll apologise to him now. We might let him ask a question another week. Uh, his name was Toby Pearman, or Pearman, who knows? who wanted me to ask Bridget lots of questions. I should have asked her, if you had to work for a lads magazine for five years, which one would you choose and why? <laughs> I'm quite glad that not. It seemed inappropriate. And do you think this would be better or worse than the Daily Mail? That is, uh, that is, I'm glad they didn't ask it now, but I'll get him to ask another question, uh, unless he's satisfied with that. <laughs> 
<laughs> Unlikely. I'll just give you a 60 quid back, all right? And you hate me that much. All right, we're going to crack straight on because the audience have literally turned against me. I can never win them. <laughs> of all the things I've said in my life, I can never win them back from this. Will you please welcome a man? He's probably best known. Usually this isn't true, but this is true. <laughs> probably best known for his appearance on Weekend Kitchen with Waitrose. <laughs> it's Brett Goldstein, ladies and gentlemen. Brett Goldstein. <laughs> Welcome. Come in. Sit down. How are you doing? Yeah, it's lovely to be here it's on my uh, Weekend Kitchen with Waitrose tour. It's good, yeah. Do you, what, do you remember? Who was hosting Weekend Kitchen with Waitrose? Oh, I remember it very well because I, I was on with Kerry Godleyman. Oh, yes. And we had to uh, promote Derek. Yeah. And we were also on... I've already realised, right at the beginning, I want to tell you a story that I would then not want you to put on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were on with Catherine Jenkins. Oh, yeah. And it was so, so bad. Yeah. Don't use any of this. It was so bad <laughs> and awkward and weird. And they cooked us food. And the food was fucking horrible, which <laughs> was genuinely shocking because I thought, well, obviously, it's gonna, they have like this master chef. And then, and we were sat there and they asked us terrible questions. They clearly didn't know who we were or why we were there, much like you lot, I'm sure. And, uh, <laughs> and I kept, and then there were like seven cameras and they had loads of auto cues. So I kept, look, I never knew which camera was on. We just sort of sat in this kitchen. And often when I watched it back, I'm just staring down the lens like a, <laughs> like a serial killer, just looking like, the fuck is going on? And then, and, and me and Kerry were sort of laughing, and Catherine, oh God, she's not in, is she? Catherine, no. Catherine, National Treasure Catherine Jenkins. So we, so we thought, oh, we're all in this together, we're the three guests, and we sort of, there was a bit where something was happening over here and we weren't on, except for me staring down the lens. And <laughs> Catherine, uh, we sort of turned to Catherine Jenkins and sort of be like, let's be a gang. And we sort of went, that's a nightmare, isn't it? And she just sort of smiled like a robot and went, do you like cooking? <laughs> and I thought, me and Carrie looked at each other like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Shame you can't use it. We can probably yeah. work around it. Okay. Uh, it's a shame you don't have a story about work being on Weekend Kitchen with Waitrose, because I do. Uh, <laughs> No, I was on with uh, Caroline Core. I think Caroline Core, one of the cores it was. Oh, really? Yeah, not the man. It definitely wasn't the man core. It was one of the other cores. <laughs> but then they brought up. We used to do a. We used to do a routine about the cores. I used to fancy. Uh, which one did I fancy? The Ooh, pretty one. Uh, and <laughs> that's they're, they're all lovely. I can't remember. Andrea Core. Andrea Core. I fancied. Right. Uh, and, uh, and we had a shrine to her. Uh, and then with, all, with the other ones crossed out on it and, uh, and I'd go on about the man corn and have a thing through her face. But she'd never heard about that, so I had to discuss this, wow. discuss this with her. But she seemed quite, she was quite, quite funny, she was up for a laugh, she quite enjoyed it. Quite flirtatious with me, I thought, for a woman who was married and knew I was married. So, you know, the, the shrines, well, I had a Julia Sawala shrine and then five years later I went out with Julia Sawala. This shit works. Yeah, so... I would have taken, you know, it wasn't the core I wanted, but right. I would have, it's close enough. If you squint, then pretty all, they're now. pretty similar. I mean, to be honest, I would have had sex with the man core. <laughs> it, it was, it's still the same, de it's the same genetic yeah. material. That's yeah. all you have to, you have to look at it on a molecular level. <laughs> so it was a shame you didn't have a story about uh, Weekend Waitrose, because I did. I was on with Lisa Snowden and... Yes, that's who I was on. Jamie Thigston, I think. I don't know, I've no. done so many of those things, I can't... The other thing that happened is after we'd done three sections, Lisa Snowden said, my name is Brett, by the way, for this bit, and Lisa Snowden said, let's go back to the kitchen with Kerry and Ben. And, <laughs> and you cu it cuts to me and you see me go... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a really good episode. <laughs> I don't think anyone watches it. Literally no one, just it's me. It's really early in the morning back. as well. It's live, isn't it? Yeah. You have to go out to Pinewood or somewhere to film it. Yeah. It's really, oh, the food was nice when I did it. Uh, not that you said anything different. <laughs> uh, so, uh, <laughs> that quiet. Um, I'm a massive fan of yours, Brett, and I'm not, I'm not, I don't think everyone will be aware of who you are. Sure. Chris Evans, not that one, didn't know who you were, and he knows a lot about comedy. Fair enough. Uh, but uh, <laughs> even when I said he's in uh, Uncle, 
Yeah. Nothing. Uh, nothing. I says in Derek, he said, I don't watch that. Yeah. I said, I, he said, I didn't fancy watching that, so I never watched it. Yeah. I don't know where he's coming from. Uh, oh, yeah. Scott, I never watched it, so I can't. I don't, you're in Scott in Drifters. Yeah. You play, you kind of specialise in sexy men next door or with people you go out with Nick Helm's sister, is that right? In, no, in no, his ex-girlfriend. Ex, his ex-girlfriend in Uncle. Yeah. Uh, so you're kind of a philandering man who... I'm no, basically... Stuff, uh, drifters, you're a nice guy. Who, I'm nice fancy? in drifters. Yeah. I'm evil in uncle. Yeah. I've, got, I've got such Dude, a range. Got range. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And you're in Hoff the Record. That's right. Tell us about it, because that's... As we record this, that's... I don't know if it's it started up yet. Yeah, it's on uh, episode five. Oh, yeah. is it? <laughs> <laughs> Come on, no. No, I'm glad everyone's watching it. I'm glad yeah, everyone's watching, watching it. it. What, what's uh, David Hasselhoff like in real life? I had to really think about what his name was then, because the Hoff, the Hoff put me off. I was thinking Ho David Hoff, Hoffelhoff, what I was going to call him. Uh, David Hasselhoff is uh, f f fascinating. <laughs> uh, no, I really like him. He's really lovely, but he, 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 he drinks a lot of Red Bull. I mean, he produces about 10 Red Bulls a day. I don't know if that's an expose. And, uh, <laughs> and he... Uh, He's got a lot, lot of energy from all that Red Bull. And, <laughs> and he tells a lot of stories, and he's lovely, and he wants you to like him. He's really nice, and, yeah. and he's very generous, because the show's sort of semi-improvised, and he lets you... He doesn't go, shut up. Yeah. He, you know, he lets you... Well, let's, let's give people a bit of a background on you, because you've talked about these things, so you're definitely on stage to people, so you'll definitely uh, talk about this. You, okay. uh, you've done... Uh, well, you've done, have you done more than two stand-up shows? You've done two... No, I'm two, about to do the third. Third one. Yeah. So the first one was... Um, Called, what was it? Uh, called grew Bre up in a strip club. Yeah, was Brett Gosling grew up in a strip club. Yeah, and you grew up in a strip club. Well, uh, the it was my dad when I was I was twenty. I say grew up, but I was innocent. And uh, <laughs> my dad had a midlife crisis and left my mum and bought a strip club in Marbella, <laughs> and uh, and I went out there to help him. And in the end, one year later, I was still there. <laughs> Uh, and that was that story. <laughs> <laughs> and that was you got an hour out of that. Got yeah, could have got more actually. Yeah, you yeah. Have. But he left. He left you in charge of it. It, it. A lot of really dark shit happened, and uh, because there's, because basically my dad uh, used to run a bookshop, and it, he's a really nice man. He's a really really nice nice man, and he sort of decided to open a strip club. And I I have this in the show, but none of you have seen it, so it's fine. But I. I I said to him, what, but what do you know about running a strip club? And he said, well, it's, it's a business, isn't it? It's the same as running a bookshop. Just instead of selling books, we're selling uh, dances. And I said, y yeah, but you've never had to throw anyone out of a bookshop for fingering a Zadie Smith. <laughs> um, <laughs> but also, he just thought it would all be, you know, he thought if you run, like anything, you run it sort of clean, it will be, it'll be clean. But the problem is when you open something in the underworld, you attract the underworld, and it got <laughs> so dark so fucking quickly. <laughs> and uh, yeah, mad old, mad old time. Yeah, and what, so what kind of relationship did you have with your father that he employed you in the street? Well, it was actually my mum that made me go. <laughs> uh, it was her idea, it wasn't his idea. She said, you've never had a gap year. <laughs> and, <laughs> uh, and it'll be a good experience. And, <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. I, I'm fair play. I got a show out of it. You know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know that he was, because in a way, I wondered when I look back at it. I think I might have been a downer for him because he's thinking, "Fuck, now I've got eyes on me." Do you know what I mean? Like, uh, I've got a, a spy. That's but, what your mum was thinking. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're all lovely people. I want to <laughs> clear on that. As and is the strip club closed down now? Yeah. Or has it gone other? Well, other it's now been so. It's. I actually went to. This is like a while ago. I went to visit it the other day because I was in Spain and I still have some friends there and I thought I'll have a look at what the club has become and I don't know what the fuck it was <laughs> but it was like a really really fancy nightclub that only had women in it but they weren't dancers. I, I, I hate to make assumptions but I think it was a brothel <laughs> and, and a really fancy one but it's next door to a brothel. The whole area is awful. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I don't know what it is now, but it seems like something's up. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a history. 
<laughs> Sounds like. And then the yeah. next show was uh, contained scenes of an adult nature. Yes. Which uh, were, so I, which I, I, I saw this show. It was, it was a great show. See. Thanks. Uh, difficult second show, but and the, yeah. the first show has been a bit, but it was a big success. But the second show was did, did really well as well. It was about online porn amongst other things. It was about porn and yeah. uh, and uh, the struggles. Listen, you know, you just had uh, Bridget Christie last week, <laughs> and uh, you know the <laughs> the uh, it was sort of a, the, I think the 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 difficulties of being a feminist when you're a man and there's the <laughs> fucking internet. Uh, <laughs> And uh, about porn and yeah. and I I, uh, I have not I'm cl I'm clean I haven't <laughs> looked at porn in two years really yeah really truly wow. but what I've discovered is have you I've listened to it <laughs> I've overheard some <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have discovered if you cut if you sort of go I'd, if you blanketly avoid all of it you then realise how fucking it's everywhere else. It's very hard to avoid. And when that beach body ready yeah. protein world thing came out, I found that very troubling. <laughs> because there is a, you know, something happens. To, to, <laughs> it doesn't matter what you're thinking here. Like, I, I was looking at that person and was thinking, yeah, this is a real issue. And he loves it. And it's, <laughs> and it, and it's uh, difficult, you know. You, you want to keep... I think you could... Anyway... That, I pointed at my penis for the audio, the audio uh, but they got, they got it. Yeah, yeah. The audio listeners are very clever. Okay. And if they're not, they'll go, I wonder what's happening now. I'll go to YouTube and check the yeah. free video. I'll check him. And maybe, it's, maybe I'll go to Kickstarter and add some money so that the next series can be filmed as well, just in case Brett points his penis next time. <laughs> and I don't know what's going you've got on. But you've got to put something on for the visuals, haven't you? <laughs> you do. Yeah. Um, but, I, you know, I think... It, I, I, well, I'm just getting older. I find, you know, the problem with pornography... Yes. Uh, which I, I talked to Louis Theroux about this for a while. Louis Theroux right. put me off uh, using pornography because I just thought of his face coming into now. It was because when he came in dressed as that part ranger, it just put me yeah. off my stroke uh, of the gay porn that I love watching. Uh, in his show, he kind of revealed the, the real people behind, yeah. and it was just sort of so tragic. So sad, and that lovely man yeah. who just wanted love, and every time he was going to a porn shoot, he, he sort of... He came to the camera and he went, yeah, she doesn't really like me. It was sort of heartbreaking. You thought, yeah. Yeah, of course she doesn't. You, you're at work. So for a, <laughs> for a while, I felt morally culpable in the destruction of those people's lives. Yeah, oh, well. you're over it. <laughs> I got over it. But now I'm just older. I just, it's just boring. I mean, I think I've talked with this with Rob Delaney, but it's just boring and like, not mm. in a good way. It's like, but it's, you know, it's just this, they're all so, pornography gets so similar. Yeah. So it, and it's just the same story every time. No one's, in, no one's in no love more. with each other. I mean, yeah, but it's, the story is a man puts his penis in a woman's mouth, vagina, and asshole. Yeah. And then ejaculates on her. It's just that it's, it's very touchy. It's the very same story. Just one time, maybe ejaculate next to her or something. Yeah. Or just someone else comes in unexpectedly. Or ejaculate in a bin, on And then a cleaner comes <laughs> yeah. in and removes it. Yeah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> so. I just find it, you know, I think once you get a bit older, it, the, I think it's, it, it's interesting, I'm going back and doing all of my uh, yeah. sh solo shows again, and it's very interesting to see the levels of, of you know, the way your life changes and the way your, you know, passions and yeah. whatever change. And when I was turning 40, I was, I was like, sort of driven insane by uh, my midlife crisis, and my, li my libido got just unbelievably big, and it was already quite big already. That's just my libido. <laughs> You know, and I became more obsessed with sex than I'd ever been, and I was right. always obsessed with sex. But now, eh. you're over it. Once you've had a baby, I mean, fuck, you realise yeah. what you can do with it, and it's a yeah. dangerous weapon. <laughs> <laughs> you think that's it now? That's, yeah. uh, that's over. But I don't, you know, I don't. It, I actually don't. I'm sort of worried that I, the, the libido is, is is gone from that level. So I, I wouldn't look at a bit. I would guess if you'd not looked at pornography for two years and then you saw a picture of a woman. Just wearing quite a lot of clothes, that might be enough to... Yeah, yeah, anything will set me off. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this, was this you on here? Yeah. <laughs> you, uh, was, you were sitting in my chair. Because it's like brown coloured, that is wrong. <laughs> that is some back it's pressure. It's been a long time, I'll tell you, two years. Two years, it's all after rotted a while, in there. it comes out yeah. like that. Um, <laughs> What was the question? <laughs> <laughs> it's just an interesting discussion about... Yes. Pornography. Uh, well, I think your libido goes in... Um, yeah. As far as I can see, it goes in, in cycles. It does. And do, do you, don't you think, or do you think, that it is... Um, 
that creative, I don't want to sound pretentious, but creative energy is the same as sexual energy. Like if, if you're doing a lot of sex and your libido is big, you're probably not making anything good. <laughs> <laughs> well, come and see oh fucking 40 and decide for yourself. <laughs> which I'll be doing when I'm 48. Uh, I don't know, it is weird. Well, it's, I think, certainly not uh, having to worry about all that stuff. Yeah. So the, as, much as, as much as meeting my wife was wonderful and I was in love with her and all that stuff, but actually then I stopped drinking and I, for, for a while, not last night. I mean, a week ago last night. Yeah. Uh, I mean, about two months ago, because this takes ages to go out. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, that gave me a lot more time, just that. But then also, yeah, you're not thinking about about whether, you know, where am I going to go after yeah. the show? You're thinking, oh, thank God I can go to bed. <laughs> because my daughter's kept me awake for five o'clock this morning, so I can now sleep. Uh, but so, so that, that definitely changed. So I think that, yeah, I think that's true. Which, which is sort of interesting. My new show is sort of a little bit about whether being content is good or bad as being a comedian. It seems being a bad thing, but I think it's quite a good thing. For that reason, uh, I, I think, think well, you channel your, your creativity into... Name, your name three <laughs> good happy comedians. Um, Go. <laughs> Charlie Caroli, the clown, for your time. Uh, I think there are, I think there are, I mean, a lot of the, a lot of, there is a lot of angst in a lot of the kind of uh, edgy comedians, but I yeah. think they're a good, I mean, Eric Morgan was happy. Was he? I think so. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think a lot of those guys, a lot of those old school guys have happily married. Bob Hope was... Jasper Carrot uh, seems happy. <laughs> <laughs> He does. Yeah. I don't know him. He always <laughs> yeah. looks smiling. Doesn't, doesn't he? do much comedy anymore. He was good on Golden Balls. What happened to that? That was good Golden Balls. Yeah. Remember it? <laughs> if you were on Golden Balls, yeah, and there was like a hundred thousand pounds in the pot, yeah, and it was you versus me, would yeah. you share it or would you steal it? I. Is that that's the the. The name of the game. Yeah, so if we both put steel, neither of us get it. If we both put share, we share it. If one of us puts steel and one of us puts share. How much is it? £100,000. I'd share it. Yeah. Would you steal it? I would now. <laughs> if I'm on... What I did there was clever, right? Yeah. I think I would. I think the correct thing to do is prisoner's dilemma is, the, is what it's, it's actually. Oh, but if we both say share, we lose it. No, if we both say share, we get it. We share, we share it. Oh, right. So that we both get 50 grand. You'd feel like such a prick if you. Oh, you see people do it. That was, it was a good show, wasn't it? Golden Balls. Where's it gone? better than that one where they just do the two-piece machine, isn't it? Oh, that's my favourite show. <laughs> the tipping the, point. The, yeah, two-piece machine. Fuck me, that's incredible. A, they should call it the two-p machine. That's when it should be two it's p's. Not, it, it is hip, not, tip, tipping point is genuinely one of the best things I've ever... I can watch that for days. Like, what the fuck is going on and why are they... This, this man's got a talk. Everyone on it looks mad. Uh, the, the host looks existentially depressed and I don't blame him. <laughs> And it goes on forever, and you think you're just pushing a finger. I like it when they have to, to guess what they think. It's coming down and going, what, what do you think's going to happen? Yeah. <laughs> go, and they go, I don't know, it's good. Good. <laughs> Might go where he needs to go. Oh, it hasn't gone. It's gone yeah. a bit over. Yeah, it might. <laughs> a, you can pretty much tell what's going to happen, so it doesn't really need a commentary, but B. We just, I just go, should we just wait and see? Just wait, it's only been like 10 yeah. seconds. Let's wait and see. Yeah. Let's wait and see what happens. It's, I don't need to predict it. It's an hour, that show, isn't it? It's not, <laughs> it's not like a 25 minute. Yeah. You're watching a lot of coins going a lot of stocks. <laughs> that's on not, I like the element of luck in it. It's nice, that's nice. Yeah. And I like the fact that most of the people are having it are really stupid. Yeah. <laughs> so that's good. Yeah. And that's fair, because if you had. If you get someone who's very clever on it and then just doesn't go their way, you sort of think that's not very fair. Then. Yeah. But as long as everyone's all stupid. Idiots. Yeah. I sort of, and also I, I always wonder is there someone on it who's genuinely this has been their dream? You know? <laughs> and good luck to them. It's my dream. It's very you know. exciting when the star ones go. Yeah, it's good. But I've never, I do a thing with Pointless where I sometimes go to the gym and exercise all the way through Pointless <laughs> as a 50 minute workout. On um, Pointless? This well, is what you did on it? No, well, well, I watch Pointless at the gym. I watch it. Oh, OK. And it's quite a good workout, because it's 50 minutes and you've got to okay. keep cycling or running or whatever you're doing. But I've never done it with tipping. You wouldn't do it with tipping point. No. It doesn't motivate you. It doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, good. Yeah. Well, I think we can wrap it up now. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, I just really that's want to know what you'd do in Prisoner you. Dilemma. <laughs> so I'll we'll find out what you'd do in Prisoner's Dilemma. I will ask you an emergency question. Okay. Because I didn't get to ask uh, Bridget any, because, you know, that's what, yeah. she was really interesting. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I didn't Purple. keep saying, 
we can't use that. I'm joking. He's, a, oh, he's all right. <laughs> if you had to go to a desert, I'm, I'm really joking. I'm really joking. I'm sorry. It's all right. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, aware. If you had to go on desert island dicks, what would you, which eight Richards would you take to a desert island? <laughs> eight of them. Eight Richards. Like, you get me already, so don't worry. I know you're, that'd be your first. You're, you're coming to the island? Yeah, I'm there. I'm, all, I'm like the Shakespeare Richard Herring. <laughs> Is there anything else on this island? Uh, it's a desert island, you know. So like it's, it's got basic provisions that you shelter. Can, well, you can make your own shelter. Can we go to Richard Branson's island? <laughs> that would be quite good. Necker. Yeah. Okay. I will take Richard Branson. Why, yeah. why would I take him? I'd take. Uh, I don't know. His name's Richard. That's a good. That's Richard. Really, what you're doing is how. Okay. How many Richards can you Richard name? Richard Branson. <laughs> Richard. Herring. You get to four, and then you won't be able to think of any more, and then there'll Richard be quite. Richard Osmond. Yeah. Like chat. Yeah. And facts. Yeah. You get that uh, up to a pointless. Richard. Gear, for blinking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Richard. That's four. <laughs> I that told was, you. Yeah. Four. My mate Richard. Yeah, you can take him. Lovely bloke. Yeah. Uh, you'd like him. You I two would. would have a lot of chat. Well, there me aren't many Richards. Googly. It's not. There aren't many Richards. It's a dying name. Yeah. I'm very upset about it. You could take Richard, who ran the farm that Bridget Christie worked on. Yeah. <laughs> he could hose us down when it's too hot. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Richard. <laughs> Just, I'll just wait here till you've got all Okay. <laughs> this is fucking gold, as I remember people called Richard. Um, it might lead to an interesting place. You know, I met yeah. Ben Shepherd at uh, Buckingham Palace. Who's he, Ben Shepherd? He's the guy who, run, who does Tipping Point. Oh, really? Yeah. <gasps> Talked to him for quite a while. He was in my little group when we met Princess Anne. He's a very nice what? guy. Have you had him on here? No. You've got to ask him where his ideas come from. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he has any of his own. <laughs> I think he came up with Tipping Point. Yeah. Yeah. Went in. But a lot of these things I thought, yeah. I, I, I genuinely thought that, would, I thought of that idea and thought that's stupid. Yeah. But when you're trying to think of quick quiz shows, that's, I, I spent a well, lot of time. Well, there was that Heads show. and Tails. There was. was another of my You know who hosted shows. that? Justin Lee Collins. Yeah, that's what, what happened to him. <laughs> so. <laughs> What happened to him? He's, just food. Yeah. He's on, um, on Fubar. Fubar Radio. Are you on Fubar Radio? No, you. you I was, yeah. Was. I, yeah. yeah. They've had a lot of people on there. Does anyone listen to it? Can I say that? No, they, you can say that. Okay. And Does anyone? Uh, no, they don't. Okay. You were our guest on one. You yeah, came yeah. on with. Uh, it changed Terry. my life. Yeah. Um, my career Did really you get took any, off. Did you get, get any tweets from that? No, no, nothing. I mean, no. I didn't even listen to it. No. And I watched Weekend Kitchen. <laughs> no, <you didn't. laughs> You were just staring into the microphone. Yeah. It was a very strange. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm amazed it's still going through our radio, but it's still. Can the nerds confirm? Andy McH would know. It's still going. Do people listen? To, do you listen? No. No. Even Andy McH doesn't listen. I mean, that is how. It's like shouting into the void, isn't it? But. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, no, you I mean, know, you're, in, you're on thin ice here, saying that on my podcast. So. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> getting dangerously close. Okay. But you don't do it anymore, right? Because no, I don't do it. I didn't. Um, I was um, my contract expired. Okay, which was helpful. <laughs> and uh, oh shit, I don't know what kind of worms I just. I was no, I was, I was. I was actually, I was unhappy with uh, who the other people they had on the station because it started out like mm. I was told it was going to be a comedy station, and then suddenly these other names like Justin Lee Collins, which yeah. you know, and he's, he, uh, he should be allowed to work again. Uh, and, uh, but it's sort of slightly odd to yeah. be uh, handing over from one hairy man to another. Uh, and, uh, and then John Gaunt, was the, John Gaunt was on for a while. Though I saw John Gaunt, I was driving down, the, John Gaunt, who I don't really talk about much anymore, I used to talk about him a lot. And do you know who John Gaunt is, people? I don't know who that is. Uh, he's like a shock jock kind of guy. He's a very interesting man. He used to uh, run TikTok theatre, I believe, in Coventry, which did a lot of uh, kind of left-wing plays. Yeah. And then he's become quite a right-wing gentleman. And UKIP, I think he was a supporter of UKIP, and he writes for tabloids, or he used to. And then he did Fubar Radio, and I think he, they parted ways. Right. Uh, one way or another, I don't know what happened. But then he, he gets on Twitter spats. He kind of try, try, tries to get me involved in the Twitter spats, but I'm not interested. But I saw the other day, as I was driving uh, back into London from the, on the M4, he's taken out, I presume himself, to some of those billboards above, you know, as the M4 comes oh, into shit. London, where that LucasAid one is. Yeah, yeah. Near to there, it's been there forever. It looks nice, it makes, 
and that makes me want to drink Lucasade. Uh, you don't need. Uh, there's there's two billboards of his face and just his website on there. It says John Gorn's back. I think, I think you can see from the excitement yeah. how I feel go back from it. Holy shit. Uh, and he's, so he's taken out two adverts for his own podcast. Maybe I should do that. Maybe I should. As you drive into London on yeah. the M4, that bridge. Or drive out. You can see it on yeah, the kind Either of way. Of it, yeah. There's one in both directions. It's the end of days. <laughs> it's interesting. He's a very yeah, interesting, interesting man. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, if you had to choose between dating a man mm -hmm. who was a six foot tall penis, yeah, or a man who instead of having a penis had a tiny man in where his penis was, who was a living man, which of those two things has he cleaned his foreskin? Yes. <laughs> the, well, the tiny man. Doesn't well. It's, there's um, there's Does a the debate. tiny man have a penis? Yeah, well, he has a tiny another tiny man so all the way around. So there are no the foreskins. Man. It's just all the way around. And so if you're going little. out with a man who's got a man yeah. for a penis, yeah. if you were to have sex with that man, the little man's penis is the thing you're going to have sex with. No, you'd have sex with the little man. Would the be whole the penis. man's going yeah. in? What? Yeah. Just holding his breath? Well, <laughs> I, I've been informed that because he shares a cardiovascular system with the man, he does not need to he's breathe. Got guilt. What? He's like a fish. <laughs> <laughs> his blood is oxygenated via the man's breath. So, as so he long doesn't as, have a... As long as the big man can breathe, the little man can breathe in any... I'm not sure that breathing would be the main problem you would have. Then. But... That's my main concern. Yeah. Well, you know, maybe for you, it depends where you're putting him. Well, I suppose... I mean, yeah, you're right. I suppose it's going to go in and out so he can <gasps> keep going. <laughs> uh, well, if it's you, it's, gonna, it's going in one of two places. Yeah. Neither of which I think the little man will be that excited about. How? One of which I think he'll be actively not wanting to go into. Yeah. The little man's not into me. The, little, the, the, the big man's like, oh, I yeah, like yeah. this guy, but the little guy's like, oh, really? Well, I don't like... know if it's... <laughs> I think you'd have to get both there for me. I think just it's a difficult yeah, legal case. Is... But you I think you would have to have parties. consent from both. Because he's still a man. Can you negotiate? Yeah. Like... So he'd have to want to do it. So that's fine. So, I've, so basically, I've gone on a date. I've managed to charm big yeah. guy. Yeah. But I've also got a... Like, OK, can, you, can we have a chat? And now? I don't know what point that... I don't know if, like... Man in pants. If you're out on the date, the big man goes, there's someone I want you to meet. OK. And that's part of the date. Or if the date's successful, you get back and he goes... Now also, there's someone you should meet before we move on because although I consent, you will also have to get his consent. The man in the pants, he, he's got to sort of stand tall, right? Yeah. If he... Or he could... Yeah, he's got a... Easy enough, isn't it? He's got a spine. Yeah. But he's got to keep it. Yeah. Got a, skull, position. got a skull. It's all... It's not... He can't go flaccid. Okay. I don't know if he grows at all. That hasn't been the decision. Is he wearing... Boots. Is he? He's well, he just. He's got, naked. He the any, man, the little man, is naked. Um, he hasn't got any feet. Is the first problem. So he isn't wearing boots. His feet are. Is he is just. He's just a <laughs> growing out of the testicles. The testicles are still there. So he's like a, an amputee. He's like. No, no, a, he's got. He's a top half man. Well, if he has feet, he can't put shoes on them unless they are somehow cut. Unless Maybe they're some like Velcro or some popping out on top of the balls. <laughs> Just how would you get the shoes on? You'd have to pull them My over point his head. Also, or... so then the alternative is big penis. What's going in, mate? All of it. The whole, the whole six foot. <laughs> well, if you're brave enough to take that, I think you might be. Has the six foot penis? Got, he's just literally a penis. Hasn't yeah, he's got, got a face, obviously. Uh, but um, if I were to have sex else. with a six-foot penis, I'm assuming I have to go through the blowhole. Yeah. I have to, because that's the only place it's going to fit. Or maybe his mouth, if that's a different. He's got a face. Okay. He's got a face on the top. <sighs> I'm going to go with the little man. Okay. Um, <laughs> the little amputee man, because a lot of people do go that. Yeah. He sounds friendly as well, and he's been through a lot, and I'd be gentle with him. <laughs> I think he likes you. He's, he's, he likes you already. Right? He's just, just, have you got a little penis man? <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's Is this a setup for later? <laughs> Is this the bit we never see? If you have this, come back to the stage. I'll show you. And he's like, watcha. <laughs> Do you think having yes. sex with a robot counts as infidelity? Because everyone a really else good does, question. but my my wife does. I was watching. What's humans. the robot's face? 
the robot's like a human being, looks like a human being, but it's not a human being. I was watching humans, I've caught up with humans, I've only seen the first two episodes. It's getting a bit more, dis- it started well, I thought, it's getting, uh, it could speed along a little bit. But he finally has, he does, the man, the husband has sex with the, and he, uh, he was arguing from my point of view. And they made him quite an unpleasant character. Right. And I thought, unfairly, I was going, the wife wasn't listening, and my wife was saying, see. Um, yeah. I was, no, no, hear him out. <laughs> listen to him, listen to his reasons for having sex. She's a machine, she's not a human being, just because yeah. she looks like a human being. She looks and feels, and all of that, like a human yeah. being, but, but she's she isn't a, a person, she's just a machine. She's a, he calls her a sex aid. I wouldn't do that to my robot. No. <laughs> but that is true, it is true, that's what she is. So, you know, would you... I think for it to be sort of okay, you sort of have to remove the face. That's worse, <laughs> surely. <laughs> For your wife, for your wife, because then it's like, no, I'm just, I'm just having, having sex, having with, sex the box. with this. I'm just having sex with a box. But if it's got a face and the face is nice and just it that, smiles, yeah, then it feels like a person, doesn't it? But and that's what. So that's the point. I suggest you take its head off, <laughs> and then make, and then you can. Ha- I'd be, I think I'd be okay with that. Okay. As your wife. Is that true of wi- of women as well, or just robots? <laughs> yeah, if you take. <laughs> Because it's like, I do joke about that in one of my old shows, which is very distasteful. About the It's not cheating if they're dead. It's, no, it's the, uh, the female unit. The front cover of the female unit was just like a torso with no arms, no legs, no head. Just the good bits. <laughs> <laughs> and then I explained that a woman has to have a head if I want to actually go over. That is the, no, I mean, that is the first, I say it's a joke, and the first thing I look for in a woman is that I go, oh, she's got a head, that's good. Yeah. Now let's move on and see what other bits she, she has. <laughs> But the head is the first thing I look for. You're a romantic. <laughs> it's interesting to go back and doing old material because, yeah. like, it's you know you really now does. I'm an older man. I don't like a lot of the stuff I used to do. <laughs> I don't really particularly like that joke. That's now worse. you've got to plough through. Well, I don't have to do it. It's an interesting you know discussion about whether I can change it, and whether I can m- miss some bits out. But it's also quite interesting to force myself to do. But you've got to sell thing. it like you mean it. Yeah, well, it's hard. I mean, that, I think that's that's going to be the hard thing is to do... The, the, this, the shows were around around 39 and 40. Are, I'm playing a kind of more angry version of myself and I say some horrible things. I think if you see the whole show in context, it kind of makes sense. Right. If you take bits out of context, they're not very nice. <laughs> uh, so, you know, it would be hard to sell those as someone who isn't feeling anything like that anymore, you know. So yeah. it's... it's uh, yeah, it would be interesting to see if it works. People should come and watch it. I hope they do. Mm. Is it every day you're doing a different show? No, it's, tw- it's, t- it's six weekends. Uh, it's Fridays and Saturdays. It's stupid, isn't it? Really stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck with it. And it's only these, there'll be these blokes here. <laughs> just all they're laughing at me, going, yeah. you had to learn all those shows. <laughs> Look, it's just us. Because <laughs> we didn't tell our friends about it. Uh, it's our little secret. That's how, they, that's how they like it. We love you, Rich, but no one else must know. <laughs> So you are in. You've done, how is your film coming along? Is, is it out? You're gonna oh, my film, no. It, uh, it will come out in October. Wow. So it's called yeah. Super Bob. Super Bob. And it's about an English superhero. Yeah. It's about the world's only superhero, and he lives in Peckham. And uh, it, 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 the film is set on his day off, and he has the, his first date in six years, and stuff happens. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, yeah. So Catherine Tate's in it. Catherine Tate's in and, it. Plays uh, my boss. Yeah. And ha- 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 David Hay. David Harewood's in it. Yeah, Harewood again. So. Yeah. It's Nat good, Tenner from Game of Thrones. Wow. I don't watch. It, don't you? Yeah. She's this in is that. a Lannister. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a Lannister book. Ah, what are you kid? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So excited to and see so that. And so, is it coming out all over the world? Is it an it, independent out, film? Is it a it's an independent film. Yeah. Yeah. And you've, is it your, you've written this with your mates? I wrote and it. We, we spent five years making this film. I would suggest, if you're interested in making films, I mean, don't. It's a fucking nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> it takes so long. Yeah. And five years, like, it's a long time, isn't it, to, to stick with. You're going back to your shows. Yeah. If you write a joke... And then you have to wait five years <laughs> to see if that joke lands. <laughs> it's a long time. Yeah, but it's an amazing thing to have achieved. Yeah, so I'm got, very got, proud of it. You've got backing from, you've written this idea, come yeah. this idea, and then you've got backing. Yeah. Is it a big budget? What's the uh, budget, is it? I, 
I just, I'm genuinely not allowed to say. Okay. I don't know why that is, but I'm not allowed to say. Okay. You're but allowed to say whether it's small or medium it's, or large. Uh, <laughs> it's not tiny, right. but it's definitely not big. Yeah. It didn't cost. But I think we don't want to say that because no one likes the sound of something when you go. Yeah, it's really small. People go, why the fuck would I go and see it? Uh, well, there's lots of lots of great films with small budgets, better films yeah. with small budgets. So, but yeah, but a lot of people have ideas for films. I've had lots of ideas for films, yeah. and none of them have ever got made because it's difficult it's to really make. Really hard. So, how did you make it happen? Uh, I mean, it's quite. I, I try. How do I tell it quickly? We we made a short film. We made a short film. And the short film won an award or got nominated or something, came second. And, uh, <laughs> not that I was really annoyed. We came second. And then Film 4 asked us in for a meeting and we sort of pitched it as a feature. And, the, and at the t uh, Robert Jones, who made The Usual Suspects, he liked it and then he came aboard as a producer and then somehow he got money. And then all of us, you, the thing is when you're like, trying to make a film, there's years and there's two, it was like two and a half years of nothing and just developing the script and all this, and then suddenly you're told you're making it in three weeks, <laughs> and you're like, oh, what the fuck? And uh, it was something to do with the tax break, so it had to be made before the end of the tax year or something like that, and then suddenly it's happening, and you're like, I can't fucking what? And then there's <laughs> another two and a half years at the back end where you're trying to get people to see it. And yeah, <laughs> it's difficult. I mean, there've been a lot of uh, poor British comedies in films and there's, yeah. a, there's, a, there's a lot that have got through I mean I think um, the only ones I can really think of is Shaun of the Dead that were yeah. you know, massively good and have successfully yeah. made it through and some there's been some good ones that haven't made it through and there's been yeah. some weird ones that have made it through I think it's fair to say Sex Lies with the Potato Men sure. is the obvious go to place there yeah. from all the people who are in it at least uh, so uh, yeah so it would be interesting to, to see how it, how it goes and if it gets yeah. taken up but that's very exciting to finally get, you know, that's an yeah. amazing thing to have achieved, to have yeah. got that made. Thanks. Yeah. yeah, well done. Thanks a lot. But you deserve it. You're, you know, you're a great comedian and you're doing all this acting as well. So you, you are, you're cropping up in, I see you in so many sitcoms, really. Yeah, well, you were, you've been loving Half the Record. and Yeah, yeah I love yeah. Half the Record. <laughs> <laughs> and the character you play in that's probably uh, David Hasselhoff's. Ex-boyfriend. Ex <laughs> I'm his personal trainer. Yeah, of course. Yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. He's, mm. quite, he's looking quite fit. You're not really his personal trainer. That's just the... That's just acting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's good. You're good at <laughs> Thank you. I think Uncle's like a really superb sitcom. really good. Yeah. Is there, are you doing more of those? Uh, I think so, but I think the people who write it and direct it need a break. I right. think they're going to have a... I don't, know if I, I don't know if this is true, but that's what they said to me on okay. set. Or I'm, or I'm not coming back. <laughs> 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 yeah, we're going to have a break, but it's on again. Uh, <laughs> if they ever need a postman in that, just, or in any of these sitcoms, I've, just, I've got the uniform, that's what I'm saying. So it can, when did you last play I played, postman? I played a postman in Time, Gentlemen, Please. I was uh, Mike, oh, yeah. the, Mike the Postman. As you can. Maybe you don't know that. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> unbelievable, you wouldn't know that. Uh, <laughs> and you filmed in Peckham. Yeah. You're a South London boy as well. Yeah. You live in Ballam. Live in Ballam. How's Ballam doing? Because I used to live in Ballam and it went a bit upmarket for my taste. Yeah, it's, it's all... I sort of moved in before everything happened and now yeah. I feel I live on a road where it's all mothers and me. Yeah. And I started to think the other day, I thought, do I look like a pedo? Because I'm literally the only person on my street who doesn't have kids. Yeah. And when it was Halloween... I thought, because they come out, everyone comes out to drink it, and this is really tragic. I went to the shop, because it's Halloween and people are into it, and I bought sweets, and I thought, because so, they'll knock on my door, so I better have something. And I was at the window, and I saw a dad with his kids, and he went to this house, this house, and got to mine, and he went, come on, and he walked around it. <laughs> and then I had to go out and do a gig, and I thought, well, I've bought all these sweets, and like it's a shame no one's knocking on the door. So I, so I put them in a bowl, and I put the bowl on my like door on my doorstep outside and I went to my gig and I came back and it was just a, a wet bowl of sweets that no one had touched it's fucking tragic isn't it so then I was like they genuinely think I'm dodgy because... <laughs> they won't even eat but your... also it is weird to try and give away sweets it's odd to leave it's sort of like a trap isn't it I mean yeah. any of the child, smallest child would go well there's something yeah, weird about up. either I pick that sweet up and I disappear down a hole yeah. or it's poison sweets yeah, I mean, no, see, if right, I was a terrorist fair. and I wanted to attack, <laughs> wanted to attack the heartland of Britain, that's all you do. Just get, 
Put it in the sweets. Loads of poison in the sweets. Kill loads of tiny children. In Balham. Well, or anywhere. I mean, in Balham's a good place to start. Yeah. I, I mean, it's not for me to tell the terrorists where to do their atrocity. I'm just no, giving don't, them... No, I mean, don't go to Balham with it. I'm just giving them advice. I mean, the problem with it, the kids have to come to your house. Yeah. So, but, you know, if you're a terrorist, you don't care, do you, that they, you're going to get caught. So it depends on what their end game is. Well, it? their end game is to destroy Western civilization. But did they, they want start to... doing that like the Pied Piper by killing the, all the children? It's not a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> I say this so people will be prepared for it. So yeah. don't. Well, now no one's ever going to take my sweets. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't take your sweets. No, I don't, I don't trust you. you. Yeah. What are you doing, living alone in a street full of mothers? I'd be, uh, my thing would be you're a bloke who likes to get off with people's mums. That's why I, that's my, would have been my go-to place. It's interesting that you're worried yeah. you're like a paedophile. That's all I'm saying. Oh, I see. I'd well, say, I work out, I do, I do, there's like a sort of gym on the, on the, like very near my house. And yeah. I go there and do a workout like in the mornings. And the only people that is 17 mums and me. And I work so hard to look as non-threatening as I can <laughs> so that it doesn't look cr yeah. creepy. Yeah. That we're sweating. You know, I'm ideas. guessing your attempts to look non creepy are creepier than. Yeah, that. yeah. Because I don't talk, so I just stand in the corner and look like staring down the leads. <laughs> yeah. I think they're all really scared of you, and that's why they won't eat your sweets. Yeah. I think you could actually be right. Yeah. Oh, it's a shame, isn't it? Get a nice shame. girlfriend and get married and have a baby. That's what I did. Yeah. It's it worked out well. Yeah. It's you did really that nice. pretty quick, right? Yeah. I was yeah. at 40 when I got married. I 40 when I met my wife, 40. Four when I got married, 47 when I had a baby. Quick, quick Perfect. as hell. <laughs> There's no way I've left it too late. <sighs> Def I'm definitely going to die. I'm, I'm going to die, but I will die, you know. With a lovely... Young well, family. she'll be, you know, I'll die having had all the, the fun years and not have to put up with the teenage years. Yeah. So that is, that is I the, think you've nailed it. I have nailed it. Yeah. Are you going to have... Are you going to have more? Um, I, have more know, you? I don't know... Hope if I ever can ever have sex again. Yeah. Has the libido break. gone because you're tired? Or yeah, no. Well, I don't know. I think, but I'm not. My libido with my wife is fine. She's a beautiful woman. Yeah. But that kind of, which you know, so it's it's a good thing. But like, I I wouldn't. In that, if I'm forty, I'm kind of writing about. I don't know how married men can. If married men feel the same things as I was feeling then, I don't see how any, you know, people should be applauded to be, the men should be lauded on high for not having affairs, mm. is my sort of stupid argument, you know, fucking 40. But, you know, that isn't, it's if you not had a, like a something. Robot, a robot woman yeah. in the house. I, I just want to have sex with a robot, and that, right. so that is what I'm. Your tastes I'm, have changed, I'm you're mature. Mad for robot. But <laughs> if, I'm just trying to determine the point. For you, it's the face, which is interesting. No yeah. one else has got that close. It's a human being just without a face. That's pretty close. You and I are nearly on the same. Yeah, but take the face off, and yeah. then it is just yeah, a, it's the same a thing. box with. I mean, I, I think most people, it's you know, it's once the thing starts to resemble a human shape. But they wouldn't be if it was a square thing. You just put your penis in. And but it isn't that around. sort of worse? Yeah, so people wouldn't mind about that because that's a thing that's that's allowed. That's my point. Is that what's the real my point? And the husband from humans yeah. is just an ordinary bloke <laughs> who gets is a horrible prick and gets yeah. slightly annoyed with his wife and decides to have sex with a robot. And oh, he never hears the last of it. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's interesting. I was just interested trying to have this discussion with your wife, and then and I like what I liked about it was how seriously she took it, and like it was good. <laughs> <laughs> and in the end, I said, you know there won't be robots you can have sex with within my sexual life. There are, there are. They're not, not as good as the one in humans. I'm only yeah. talking about the one in... They've got to look like the woman in humans, that's yeah. what I'm saying. That's fair. What I want to try and do is get a part in humans. <laughs> where, as a postman. Where I have sex with... The postman comes in and has sex with the robot. The postman I've comes in and says, costume. I've got a delivery for both of yeah, you. The and then... Okay. And then that's it. That's what? all I want to do. Okay. That's the limit of my ambitions now. This is good. <laughs> I think all of this is achievable. Good. Let me just check. I haven't got anything to say. To you. I don't think I've got to say anything to you. I wanted to see is Pat is Peter Bacon backing No. Okay. Good. Enough. Yeah. Is uh, Peter O'Brien in? No. Okay. But so I just needed to. There's a bit at the end of the show about them, but I thought they might be here from the way they phrased it. Hmm. But they're not. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to ask you another emergency question that's worked well so far. Let's give it another go. Um, 
If... Uh, I can't ask you that one. What is the secret of happiness? So that I can... If you can give me this... I've got, I'm doing a preview tomorrow and I've only got ten minutes of material. If you can make this as funny as possible, it will be really helpful. It's heroin. Do you think you're a happy person? Uh... No. Well, yeah. yeah it's hard no, to be happy when you're sad. young. So you're 30 something, 20 late. Yeah, 30. that sort of thing. Yeah. If, uh, <laughs> it's hard to. Uh, but happiness is always. It, the thing is, there was science on this, wasn't there? Do you there remember? was, probably is, yeah. Science on it. Yeah. And, they, and basically, most people. Do you know all this? I don't want to bore you. No. This good. is the science. But if you ask people what, what would make them happy, a lot of people go, like, oh, I just need a car, or I need a better job, or I need a house. And then once they get those things, there's a little spike in their happiness, and that lasts for a month. And then they go back to this level, and then they go, well, I, I would need a better car or a better thing. Mm. And then there's a little spike again, but it only lasts about a month. And the only thing that keeps that level up is um, helping others, which and neither of us do. And <laughs> also sexy robots. And se and sex yeah, helping sex sexy robots. <laughs> Is the holy, holy we help prayer. other people to feel slightly uncomfortable <laughs> about the, to feel better about, about the themselves. Things. They go, at least, you at know, least my I life isn't them. as bad as Rich. Yeah. I think, well, you know, sort of, I think, um, what do you think? Do you think that by big that, that comedians, if they're not if they're not unhappy, are not funny? Do you re really think that? Uh, I, I well, definitely, in it, I don't know the answer. I hear there are ha there are people who are happy, <laughs> but I always think, what the fuck are you writing about then? Yeah. Like, what. Like as in, I can't, I'm thinking there's, there's comedy where it's just people going, everything's really great, isn't it? Oh, look at this button. It's so, I love buttons. And I always <laughs> think, I don't give a shit about your fucking buttons. Uh, it's much better to, for comedy to That's be... That's five minutes of tomorrow's gig gone. <laughs> my button, my I love button bit. <laughs> fucking ruin. I can't do that now. I'm really pleased with that. Not everyone would identify with that. So sorry. I well, I sort of think I think because I think it's th I think it's true what you're saying. Yeah. No one is happy when you get happy. No one's satisfied with the happiness. But yeah. also, if you've got the kind of personal happiness where you're in a nice relationship yes. and have say children, then you're te you're just terrified of it going wrong. So you can never okay, yeah. you can never enjoy the happiness. But that's true. But you know, any power, any situation of power or do you or find it harder to leave the house to go to gigs now now that you're happy with a baby and a no. wife? You race it I out don't, of I know. I, I, it's hard being away for yeah. a few days, but it's not. You know, it's it's you know, it's it's nice to know they're there to return to. But you know, I I, I think that being a comedian, you see your family more than you would. Do. The, the, the weird thing is, if I had a proper job, yeah, that was nine to five, I would just have to get. That's why people who have proper jobs get tired having babies yeah. because they have to get up every day, whatever's happened, and they have to go to work. So you can sleep Whereas, all day. But most days, I don't really sleep all day, but most days I don't, you know, I don't have anywhere to go. And if I, if I, but it's bad because it means if I'm too tired to work, I just don't do any work. Yeah. Whereas if you've got a proper job, you have to go to work and do the work. A baby is a tremendous excuse to get out of shit. It is, it's really good. Uh, that's basically the only reason I'd want one. <laughs> is to get out of social engagement. Because yeah. people always pull the old baby out. And can't do anything about it. Can't, it's, can't it's argue with a baby. It's perfect. Because yeah. I don't really like... My baby is incredibly sociable. Shit. And my wife isn't that sociable. We're both quite awkward, geeky people. And I'm right. not sociable. My baby loves everyone except us. So you're going, oh, we can't, we can't come to this party. Yeah. And the baby's going, yeah, we yeah, can. We go. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. What are you talking about? This is we're a nightmare. Nothing. But when, you know, she just smiles at everyone. She wants yeah. to be involved in everything. My sister's just had a uh, baby. Yeah. It's a surrogate. Well, it's a very complicated baby. Yeah. Uh, she's. It's not. Her, I can say this. We're all. It's not her egg. Right. It's her husband's sperm. It's a, a Jamaican lady's egg. Okay. And it was made in an, in a woman in Utah. They had very long, 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 long time trying to get. It's very difficult. But now there's this baby. Yeah. I fucking love her. I love her so Ooh. much, and I hold her, and. You feel at peace and you think, oh, this is nice, isn't it? And then the other day I was holding her and it was just me and her in the living room and I was sort of lying down, she was on my legs and then uh, and I fed her a bottle and then she puked, just staring me in the eye. <laughs> went bleh, bleh, bleh for ages, like the exorcist. And I laughed so much <laughs> that I started to think, well, we're both going to drown because I'm... <laughs> 
I'm crying with laughter. I thought someone needs to come in because we've just this is it, and just kept going. Lovely stuff. It's isn't lovely. It? I, was, I was doing that the other day. It's magic. I was, I was trying to go across the room to get a muslin cloth to yeah. just wipe her face, and as I was crossing the room, she started doing that. She did that puke. Oh, really? And then I didn't have a cloth because the cloth was over there. And so then I, for a moment, I just tried tipping her in a way that the sink wouldn't come up. And I thought, that's probably not a good thing to do. Just holding her by her feet. <laughs> but actually just trying to keep the sick in there. Oh, uh, right. No, you don't. Yeah, so that was probably the bad thing to do. We can have another baby, though, you know. So that, the, first one's a, the first one's a practice. The first one's a practice, yeah. And then you get good at keeping them alive. Yeah. I mean, I'm amazed she's been alive for five months at the time of recording. Uh, <laughs> if she's died subsequently, just put a, a picture of me looking sad. <laughs> Let's you, cut this in if it's... Yeah. Oh, it's sad she's died and everything. I'm, I'm so sorry. Part, feel partly responsible. Yeah. Don't put the bit in where I laugh and... Don't cut to it. Let me do it properly. It is sad that my daughter is dead. From you <laughs> feeding her her own sick. <laughs> Don't make me laugh, because it'll, okay, sorry, sorry. it'll ruin the tribute. <laughs> Like some people think this kind of thing is uh, a bad idea because you're tempting fate. Yeah. I don't believe that myself. I think well, it's quite funny. Let's see what happens. People thought that I would stop... <laughs> people thought I would uh, stop finding dead babies amusing once I had a baby. I'm I find it slightly it. funnier. Yeah. Well, the I stakes are much higher. The stakes are high, and so it's... But that's why... It's not like when I didn't have a baby, I was thinking, oh, it doesn't matter if a baby dies. <laughs> it's just a baby. <laughs> the joke was it's the worst thing that could happen. So it's still, it's still, it's now doubly the worst thing we yeah. have. So it's twice as funny. I mean, I'm fair. terrified. It's the worst thing in the world. Having yeah. responsibility for another human being. Stay single forever. Doesn't matter okay. if people think you're a paedophile. <laughs> as long as you aren't one. Yeah. If you are one, that's a terrible thing. Okay. Seek, seek some help. Okay. Turn yourself. Can I just in. say I'm definitely not a paedophile? <laughs> <Okay. laughs> Before this goes, I don't want to leave just a gap where I well, smile, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we all know it's a joke, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't want that coming That's back to That's what Jimmy me. Savile said, though, right? Am I right? So, he made a big point he of saying really it. He never really said it, did he? He did to Louis Theroux. Oh, did he? Yeah. Hmm. Can't, well, that's the problem, you can't win. Yeah. If you say you are a paedophile, that's bad. If you say you aren't one, that's also bad. What about, I think what if I say I think, I'm indifferent? <laughs> yeah. <that's, laughs> I say I'm on the fence. I think you know. Yeah. If I had to come down one side, I'd say it's bad. That's what I say. Yeah, I've looked at. I've looked at. Yeah, I've weighed it up. I've tried both ways. No, I haven't. I, uh, <laughs> I haven't. Please cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Guess um, it's going to be. But I'm glad that Dave's uh, editing this week because Ben Walker would, if he had any hair, would be tearing it out. <laughs> he, he, he hates editing stuff. You looking forward to editing this, Dave? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I like this is an emergency question I don't ask very often. Okay. Do you have a favourite towel? <laughs> you know what? I, I only bring that out on very special occasions. I have. I realised the other day. I was yeah. literally thinking about that. I've got yeah. two towels. Yeah. I've got two towels in my whole house, and yeah. I'm starting to think that's not enough. <laughs> Uh, so I have a, I have a favourite. Yeah. I, I have one white and one brown. Yeah. The brown, brown is my favourite. How dark is the brown? Uh, n like that. Yeah. Bit for you, the... Is it your favourite just because it hides a multitude yeah, of sins? Yeah, because you think it can last longer. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they, you know, they rotate. Yeah. Yeah, you need but, more than two. Yeah, you need more than two, don't you? Start to, well, now it's summer and you can't, you know, I'll get heat you some get, yeah. you, get, you get paid for coming on this. I'm going to pay you with towels. Seriously? I'm going to send you £150 worth of towels from John Lewis. That's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a dress. That cuts Give out the middleman. That's what <laughs> I have spent it on. So yeah. That's... You, tax deductible, that is. Thank you very much. No, the tax one will never Genuinely, know. thank you. Edit that bit out where I say the tax one will never <laughs> You have to put them on your claim. OK. <laughs> plus, plus £150 worth of towels. And you'll You're have to get pay. a fucking nice towel for 150 quid. Go, I'm going I'm to do it. I'm going to go backstage with you. I'm going to let you choose. What they oh, are. Wow. <laughs> this is like Jim will It's going it. to be like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go on eBay and see if I can find a Jim will fix it towel. For okay. you. That'll be one of the towels. They I'll can't be. Do you think they'll be more expensive or less expensive? Now? <laughs> more. <laughs> Higher. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, someone knows. Oh, no. 
thought someone had a point they went, oh, um... <laughs> no, okay. um, I just want to say that my Jimmy Savile merchandise has gone down through the floor. <laughs> See, it's a good question. Have you ever seen a Bigfoot? Uh, no. Yeah, uh, Yeti. Uh, no, I'm oh, sorry. The, no, not the, <laughs> I haven't seen specifically the Bigfoot. Do you have any brothers and sisters? have a sister. Has she ever seen a Bigfoot? <laughs> no, she hasn't. But... Yeah. <laughs> we have, we, me and her have seen a ghost. Have you? Well, that's yeah, going to be but you've had that, haven't you? That's yeah, so. all right. I can never have too many ghosts. You've both seen a ghost yeah. together. Yeah. We, was, we were at the same time <laughs> experiencing the ghost. Yeah, what, what was the... What? It was a poltergeist. Oh, yeah? Yeah. For real. Were you at Bridget Christie's house? <laughs> no. Okay. I was in the... Uh, Cornwall or Devon. Yeah. It's all the Which, same. Yeah. And, uh, it's, it's all spooky. Oh, hang on. Where was Bridget from? Cornwall? Uh, no. Well, she taunted. Uh, she, was, uh, she saw the, the ghost who went, ah, was a touring that ghost. That's Somerset. Anyway, this, we went to visit some friends and they were staying in, they have like a sort of holiday home and we were staying in a hotel near it and their mum had died quite recently, very sadly, and... We were in the hotel, and then one day they all came to the hotel, and they said, we're moving into the hotel. And we were like, what's happened? And they said, there's a ghost. And we were all excited, thinking, oh, maybe it's the mum. You know, we were all excited. And they, we, said, we said, what happened? And uh, the two, two girls had been in these bunk beds, and they'd gone to sleep, and they'd been eating sweets. And they turned out the light, like, good night. And then a sweet hit one of them in the head. And she went, stop throwing sweets to her mate. And the mate went, I haven't. And then got hit in the head again. They turn on the lights, sweets are fly around the room. They go into the dad. They say, this fucking shit's going on. <laughs> in the bedroom, he says, don't be ridiculous. There's no such thing. He walks into the, be the bedroom and that, as a joke, goes, stop throwing sweets at my daughter. Bang, sweet, it's him. They all scream, run out. <laughs> so we go back in the daylight. Like, yeah, it would be interesting. We go in the house. Nothing happens. I go to the bathroom. Interestingly, I do a wee-wee. Yeah, that is And I don't flush. I forget to flush. Ter terrible. I was young. Uh, <laughs> my dad puts uh, 20p, 50p and a pound on the bunk bed. We stand there. As I come out the bathroom, the toilet flushes and two m bits of money come, one from this room, one from that room, go bang, meet in the middle. We all fucking scream, run out. <laughs> Explain that. <laughs> it didn't happen. <laughs> you are mentally, there's a lot of mentally ill comedians. <laughs> so, um, you know, there's a magnet. There's a magnet. There's a magnet in there. Giant magnet? Yeah, magnet that was attracted sweets as well. <laughs> towards people's heads. A very clear, and also a very hygienic magnet. Where did, the, did they eat the sweets afterwards? The ghosts? No, the human beings, they go back, what happened to the sweets? That's what worries I, you. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm thinking there's some yeah, free yeah, sweets being chucked sweets. around. I oh, know, they left the sweets. Everyone right. was terrified of the I'd sweets. I'd have gone back and eaten the sweets. Yeah. What kind what of sweets? Magnets <laughs> in it. All the better. Yeah. It's quite a scary story. Really scary, yeah. I mean, I listen. What do you, how do you explain it? I, I genuinely am like, I don't know what happened. I think it's to do with uh, energy in it or something. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we were all really wound up. Is it possible that one of the kids from the family yeah. was just chucking the stuff around? No, because they weren't there. It was just us. Weren't they? No, <laughs> they weren't. They were in the car. Could they have snuck back into the house? <laughs> no. I don't think there are ghosts. I know you don't. And listen, I didn't. I didn't until... Why would they throw sweets at people? Maybe there's what's, what's chocolatiers, <laughs> and they had... <laughs> I mean, look, it's, yeah, it's a good point. Why does anyone throw sweets? Maybe well, no they lived does. alone, are surrounded by mothers, and they thought, why will no one take our sweets? <laughs> <laughs> and they started throwing them at people. Take my fucking sweets! <laughs> All right, I believe you now. Thank you. Do you have any webbed toes? No. Mm -hmm. Sorry. It'd be good if that other people did. Would you tell me if you did have web? Yeah, I'd show you. Would you? Mm. I never didn't even think to ask, Bridget. What's the point of filming this? I know. If you're not getting people to get. I've got too much. I respect her too much. I don't respect you too much. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I don't respect many people that much to not think to ask to see their web toes. Yeah. But it would seem inappropriate. 
to do it to her, but I'd, if I had webbed toes, I'd show you. Yeah? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so you're giving me towel and you'd show me... Yeah. I mean, this is one of the going right out. best nights do it. of my life. We're going to go out, we're going to choose the towels. John Lewis. Yeah? And we get different size ones. You can, if you want, we can get all the... We can just all get the sizes. Whoosh, just go right through, get all the sizes. That won't even be 120, 150 quid. Holy That'll shit. be like about... I don't even know what it is. If we get them in the sale, who knows? How often is the towel sale happening? Well... <laughs> I think there is a sale of John Lewis. It's very good, John Lewis. Yeah? It'd be good if John Lewis would... Uh, would, would Put some billboards ...sponsor up. this podcast. Yeah. Because they'd like it would be better than we just get like idiots from the internet with crazy ideas that will never work. No one's giving in towels. No one's yeah. <laughs> yeah anyone from John? Is anyone in from John Lewis? Is is it's unlikely. Is John Lewis in? Because <laughs> he could green light that straight away. Yeah. Already done like that was a free advert for your towels. I bet you there'll be a, when this comes out, John Lewis. There'll be a John Lewis. Going, Why have we sold? Sold a lot of towels. <laughs> so it's John Lewis, one hundred and fifty pounds <laughs> worth. <laughs> They'll be all at home. They'll all be. You'll all be getting your towels tomorrow in the, in the playground. Uh, so, uh, how long? How long are we done? I don't know. I have no idea. How long are we done, Dave? Too long. <laughs> <laughs> how long have we done? Once you edit all the bits out, how how long are we done? Four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Um, I'm very excited about all the stuff you're doing. I'm thinking it's, Thank you. it's all going very well. Thanks. If you're in Hollywood, will you remember me and, and come yes, back on the I podcast? Yes, because I feel like a lot of this is going to come back in Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> if you're in Hollywood, you will cut it out now, but if you get to Hollywood, we're going to release the our next we're going yeah, to yeah. You haven't said anything that. Oh, the things you've said have been fine. Seriously. Don't trick me I'm not <laughs> with your charming. It'll make people will be more intrigued. The people at home will go, I wonder what. Yeah. I don't know what he said about David Hasselhoff that we can't hear. Yeah. And then they'll hear it when I put it out in the future. And they go, ah, oh, very disappointed. Um, anyway, sorry we're making it harder, Dave. Uh, so, uh, I will ask you, well, I'm it would have been great if you'd seen a Bigfoot. That would have just been the perfect. I'm so sorry. Do you ever. No, I forgot we talked about that. Um, have you ever. Were you, were you ever rude to a celebrity when you were a child? No, I've got. Uh, uh, I I'm, I met S Steve Martin once, but it's fucking so tragic. <laughs> it's one of the saddest stories of my life. Do you want that? I mean, yeah, I do. Were you a child uh, or were you a grown up? Uh, was I it was in the strip club. <laughs> no, he basically. I went uh, on on holiday once, and Steve Martin is properly like a hero, my hero. Yeah. Mine and uh, <laughs> and and I went on holiday and we went to this beach and there was waves and I love waves and I was swimming out and like <laughs> surfing in body surfing in and next to me was Steve Martin I was like it's a fucking holy shit that's Steve Martin's and and I was like can't be and it was and he liked waves as much as I did <laughs> and and I was so free I was like shit and we we I kept sort of next to him body surfing a couple of times I sort of bumped into him and. Didn't say anything. Just, oh God, God! And and then I went back the next day, and he was there again. And then so basically five days in a row, I surfed with Steve Martin, and it was such a long time that I started to think we built up a relationship. I keep coming back to surf with Steve Martin, uh, but I was scared to talk to him. I didn't want to sort of ruin it. And then uh, at the end of the last day, we we're walking back to the car, and as we we're walking to the car, he was behind me with his whoever he was with, and. And I was like, fuck, he's right behind me, he's right behind me, he's my hero, my hero, fuck, fuck. And I was thinking, well, it's a sign, he's right behind me, I've got to say something. And my dad was, like, loading up the car, and then it turned out his car was right next to our car, so then he was just stood there, we stood there, and I'm thinking, well, we spent five days surfing together, my heart was going, shit, 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 shit. And then I just turned to him, like, really suddenly, like, it's, like I basically sort of must have gone, say something now, but I hadn't planned what I'd say. And I sort of panicked, sort of turned to him, and I went, I went, this is an honor surfing with you, man. And uh, as soon as I said it, I wanted to cry. And I immediately turned back and jumped in the car. And I said, Dad, drive, drive, drive. And poor Steve Martin, didn't, he just was like, he went like that. And then we were sort of screeching out. <laughs> and he went, hi. And, and I wanted to cry for, I mean, I've never really got over that, I have to say. That was the last time I was happy. <laughs> I think Steve Martin feels. Yeah. He's very upset. 
I don't think he understood what I meant. And because I was like, we've been surf we've been surfing a week, haven't we, mate? And it was an honour. Oh. Tragic. It's sad. Yeah. <laughs> What's your new Edinburgh show about? Uh, it is about uh, drugs and fame and the Burning Man Festival. Oh. Is what it's about. Cool. Yeah. And you're going to tour this show? Maybe. Because this podcast might go out after Edinburgh. Might be about in Edinburgh. Where are you on in Edinburgh? I'm the same. I'm in the Pleasance Courtyard in the Beneath at nine thirty. Very nice. Thanks. Good. That's <laughs> where we used to hang out in the dressing room. It was, yeah, every day. That's right. Not by like as in <laughs> we both were doing shows. It wasn't like it we was just a locker room though. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we did have a dressing room in Lockheed. Yeah. We did. We met. We, 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 it was nice. That was nice. That it year. Was that nice. was a couple of years ago, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Well, let's carry on for another half an hour. <laughs> Just to make sure we've got enough. But please do keep saying things that we can't <laughs> use. Just pepper them. Yeah. Just pepper them throughout. Yeah. Uh, it's been really great. I'm really looking forward to the film. And so, Thank you. will that be. Everywhere will be on It will be that. everywhere, and I think within a short period of time, it will be available online. I would so much rather you see it at the cinema. Go and see it at the cinema. But Sport British Cinema. Yeah. Catherine Tate. Yeah. You. Yeah. David Harewood. The lady the out of Game of Thrones, my favourite show. Which one was it out of Game of Thrones? Uh, Nat Tenner. I don't watch it. She, okay. uh, plays a, a woman in the woods. <laughs> Is that a thing? I think she's been bullshitting. Is that how she got the part? I'm the woman in the she's, woods. She's, na she's naked in it, but isn't okay. everyone? Everyone is. Is she... Uh, I can't watch it since I'm off porn. Okay. I've never watched Game of Thrones. Not Natalie Dormer. <laughs> no, not no. Natalie Dormer. I know Natalie. I play poke with Natalie Dormer. Oh, yeah? Who plays uh, Marjorie. Is that right? Do you watch okay. it? Okay. I, I really like it, but I can never remember the names of any of okay. the characters. There's uh, Lannister, Ian Lannister. <laughs> Simon Lannister. <laughs> <laughs> They've all got the same name. Okay. There's a dragon in it. There's a dragon What's called. What's the dragon called? Drogon. Really? Is that right? Three of them. Three of. Well, this one of them's called Drogon. The other that one's called. a lazy Dream. name for a dragon. <laughs> Dragon. Dragon. Nograd. They did it. That was. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh. It's all right. Yeah. Unlike in humans, at least they chope some bums and stuff in it. No bums in No humans. humans, they just cut away. It's rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> Even robot bums? Yeah, I want to see a robot bum. They can just cut to it and then it's just like metal. They can do it if they remove the face. <laughs> <laughs> I've been clear on the rules. <laughs> yeah. And if it has a light, if they open up, there's a light. Yeah. That's what, I, that's what I'm interested in. Why well, can you be appalled by that? It's a robot. <laughs> Vagina or anus or, pe or urethra of a penis. You're right, How dare actually. You be if a it's purple. got a light inside, <laughs> I think you're going to get away with your infidelity. Yeah. <laughs> if your penis is the right, if it's, it's a road mail. noise. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's like a laser on the wall. Yeah. It's kind of slightly bobbling around. Yeah. No one could be upset by you sucking no. that. <laughs> no. no. There's not a woman in the world who wouldn't say, well, that's a nap. That's the most natural thing <laughs> I've ever seen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for fantastic. Brett Goldstein, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll be back Thank next week with Al Murray and someone else. I don't know who. Thank you very much. Thank you. How do you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>